The reality is, is that the normalcy of the world is such that those who are in power, no matter where or who, those who are in power will ultimately abuse power and end up serving themselves while trying to maintain their grip of control. That's a given. That's just the way of the world. That's the way it is. That's why men resist women's liberation. That's why white folks are antsy, antsy about, you know, integration and, and equality. Because we don't like to give up power. It's no different with the elected leaders of the world. So the issue for us as people of God is, what is the alternative to the false shepherds? Well, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. So the issue for us as an Easter people is, whom do we follow? And we need to remember that it's not simply what we say. But more precisely, it's what we do. We need to remember that in Matthew, Jesus said, it's not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, who enters the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of my Father in heaven. But can we, and can the world, distinguish between the shepherds? Can we really see a difference between church and state? Do we know who to listen to and whom to follow? Is there really any difference between the actions of the church and the actions of the government? Or is the church simply saying, Lord, Lord, while it also fails to do the Father's will? I don't know all the answers, but I do know this, that you and I are called as the people of God to be an alternative to the shepherds of this world. We are called to embody the actions of the Good Shepherd and to do the will of the Father. This crisis of gun violence and the failure of government to act might just be our wake-up call as the people of God. This may indeed be the catalyst that causes the church to truly ask what it means for people of faith to follow the Good Shepherd and to stand over and against the false shepherds of the powers and the principalities of this world who only feed themselves. And that is not to demonize the powers and principalities of this world. They are simply doing what is natural and normal for the way of the world. But here's the point. We are called out of the world to do what is abnormal and to stand over and against that which the world accepts as normality. Currently, there are several national responses that are at work in response to gun violence. I urge you to do more than simply say, Lord, Lord. I urge you to find a way to stand with the victims of gun violence and to stand over and against the NRA and the false shepherds who serve themselves and not the sheep. After all, we are supposed to be the embodiments of the good shepherd.
the normalcy of this world is to trust the myth of redemptive violence. That is, that violence will solve our problems. In contrast to that, the Good Shepherd calls us to nonviolence. This coming week, the Living the Questions class that has been ongoing now here on Wednesday mornings, this week the class will be centered around the issue of the myth of redemptive violence. As you leave church this morning, there is a handout that has a pre-class reading assignment attached to it. I urge you, whether you're a regular member of the class or not, I urge you to take that handout and to read it. And if it is physically possible for you to come and dialogue with your brothers and sisters in faith, to come and be part of that discussion on Wednesday morning. It doesn't matter if you've been to any of the other classes or not, or if you ever come again. You can come to one session and fit right in. There's, there's nothing to learn about it in order, you know. It's, it's simply a discussion group that is centered around the reading and then some provocative theology presented to us on the DVD. And you are totally capable of doing it, whether you've been to a class before or not. I urge you to participate in this discussion. Let us come together and seek ways in which we might follow the Good Shepherd and offer an alternative to the way of the world. After all, God has called us out made us God's own people and has given us as a light to the nations. What good are we if we hide that light under a bushel? Let us lift that light high not only with our words but with our deeds before it's too late and violence wins another battle. In closing this morning, I have two reflections on the events in Boston of this past week. Number one, the actions of the people and of the first responders to the violence, namely their ability and willingness to come to the aid of the victims with no regard to their own safety, those actions epitomize the way of the Good Shepherd and the way of the cross. If you want to know what an alternative to violence looks like, it is that kind of selfless love on behalf of our brothers and sisters. And two, violence will not end in our world as long as the alternative of nonviolence is ignored by the people. It is time for the church to not only hear and acknowledge the message of Jesus, it is time for us to follow it as well. Because after all, the implications of this Easter Gospel for us as an Easter people, if you listen to the Gospel at all, is when Jesus said, my sheep my sheep hear my voice and they 
following. 